Now tell me your sins. Go ahead, tell me. I was disobedient to my dad and I talked back to him and I had a fight. S slow down. God can't hear you. And I had a fight with my sister and I was mean to her and I teased her. Is that all? Yes, Father, that's all. Now let me hear an act of contrition. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments. But, but most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art thou good and deserving all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Amen. I absolve you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. who taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve thy soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve thy soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve thy soul unto life everlasting. I see it, Daniel. Dias just ain't gonna forget about us. That's how we always done the right thing by the church. You know what I'm saying? Now, I gotta tell you, old Pete, your bid's too high. They don't give a damn you done the right thing by the church. Robbie! Robbie! Come over here. Oh, you look, you are all dirt. Spit. More. <laughs> Father wants to talk to you. I killed two alligators. Stop it now. Listen to Father. They look like alligators. <laughs> well, I'm sure they did. Robbie, I would like to train you to be an altar boy. Would you like that? It's not fair. <laughs> it's 
it hard, Father? Hard like math? It's harder. Oh, Justine, shush. No, Robbie, it's, it's not hard like math, but um, you do have to learn how to walk and bow and genuflect. And there are lots of prayers. Will God love me more? <laughs> well, strictly speaking, he can't, but uh, between us, he will love you more. <laughs> the way I figure it, that puts me in line for the renovation at the diocese. Then I can do a proper bid. The way I figure it... Honey, the way I figure if, you, if Look, if you bid this the way you want, we're gonna lose uh, $600, maybe seven. Where do you get that? Well, where do I get it? Well, look, you, you didn't see you forgot to add in the excavating. And with the cotton that you see look well i'll make it up on the diocese job <laughs> we don't have the diocese job we don't have this job honey i'll get this job by taking a six hundred dollar loss and i'll get the diocese job we have a payment due on all that we've got a payment due on the house i want to do this over come on and i want to go with you when you talk to him about the bid Okay. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Sorry I'm late. Hi, honey. Hi. I'm gonna help Daniel fix his generator. Oh, hold off on those numbers, Sabine. Uh, um, they're not quite right yet. Fill it now, Joseph. Prayers on the left. Robbie, hold up your left hand. Now, what do we do next? Take the veil off the chalice, and then I do the little pictures. Which are called? Crucits. Cruets, Cruets. Joseph, let him learn at his own speed. He's so slow, Father. I expect to hear about that nasty crack at your next confession. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and always will be, world without end. Amen. Now, put your hands over the page. And this time, do it from memory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, will always be till the end. Amen. Father? Are you going to tell Mom and Dad that I can't do it? Well, is that what you think I should tell them? I'll make you a promise, Robbie. Father will tell them only what they need to know. The problem isn't you. The Gittry bid is a fair bid. The problem is overruns elsewhere. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that the church is a non-profit organization. Yes, well, <laughs> but we're not. Honey. The pity is, this isn't a very big job. So there's not much room for whatever. There is a much bigger job coming up. You hear that, huh? Yes, but Father, you said that our bid was fair. And I meant that. So why don't you be fair to us? Honey, they got these overruns. Well, I know that, but they're not our, they're not our overruns. Jesus, Anne. What? Sorry, Father. 
Let's have some more tea. Sister? Don't worry, it'll be just fine. Hey! I did it! Your daddy did it! Woo! Give me a hug. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Give me a great big kiss. Give your mom a kiss, too. Your daddy did it, buddy. Your daddy did it. Give me a hug. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Well, I tell you, that mom senior of yours is one tough trader. But I didn't back down a nickel. Sabine, Justine, why don't you go in and get us some beers and some sodas? Daddy's gonna make a toast. What's the matter with you? I don't see a smile. Huh? You been giving the father a hard time? No, no, not at all, Pete. Uh, he's just scared because... Because what? Because I want to take him on one of our little camping trips. Uh, that's when we really study. And I want him to stay overnight at the rectory on Saturdays, and he's afraid you won't let him. Well, Father, I got one question. Will it help him to be an altar boy quicker? For sure. Well, then that's that. Can I take my 22? Nah, Can I? That's up to the Father. Here we go. Have a cold. Pete. Now, hold on, hold on. This here is to me and your mom. She's with me every minute. And to your sister for all that nice typing she did. But most of all to our church for being so good to me and mine. Uh, I'd like to get a picture. Oh. <laughs> to the church. OK, smile, everybody. <laughs> Robbie, reach for my chin. Hold it up. Now pull me to safety. That's it. Very good, Robbie. Boys, let's settle down. Now let us pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I want you to write down the name of anybody you've been bad to and what you've done to them. Only you and God will know what you've written. Never tell anyone your sins except for God and Father because Father is here in God's place. But never tell anyone else. These are your sins and they are burning away. Where's Alex? He went, he went in with Joseph. Oh. Are you okay? I never went to bed in a tent before. Well, do you think you can go to sleep? I'll, I'll try. You want some help? I think so. Is there room for two in there? Uh-huh. Here, 
Hold the light. I bet you're setting up that altar all wrong. I bet I'd learn it faster than you. You would not. I learned faster than you in school. That's school. You're a girl. They don't take girls. That's not fair. Why not? Girls are just as good. Because you don't have a peepee. -pee. I do, too. You don't have a peepee -pee on the outside. Mine's just as good. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Why not? Because father can't play with yours. That's not fair. I'm not going to help you anymore, and I'm not going to help you in school either, so there. Help! Mommy! Daddy! And Justine made me so mad when she pulled, out, pulled my altar apart that I pushed her down in the stream. Then what happened, Robbie? She ran and told Dad, and he took the strap to me. But it wasn't my fault. Oh, I understand. It was wrong for your father to do that. Robbie? Yes, Father? Come on over to my side. We'll talk. you ate. Does it hurt you? I don't know. Oh. We'll go to St. Paul's tomorrow. It's okay, I swear. Come on. Well, we didn't find anything internal, so my guess is because of the rectal bruising, he ate something that he couldn't digest. Does he ever swallow things like plum pits or peach pits or... Oh, yes, sometimes. We've been through all that. Well, why don't you check on him tomorrow and give me a call, okay? okay. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Is Robbie home? Go right on in. I'll be so pleased to see you. Thank you. Robbie. Hi. I've got something for you. Are you okay? Here. This is for you. For Sunday. You're going to be serving mass with me. Well, how nice. Oh, Father, thank you. Can you stay for some tea? Uh, no, um, I've got to go. Oh. God bless you, Robbie. Bye. Bye, Father. Hey, aren't you going to open it? Easy. It's nothing but need to be cut. 
Now just relax, son. You're gonna do just great. Oh, what? Right. It's getting late, son. You gotta get ready. No! Listen, son. I know you're a bit fearful, but we're all waiting to be proud of you. So you start moving now, you hear? something like this for the first time. But don't forget, Father says you're his best boy. The one you've got nothing to be worried about. I know why he's scared. It's his pee-pee. Justine! I bet his pee-pee went inside. He has to have his pee-pee on the outside so Father can play with it. I bet it went inside and that's why he's scared. What? What are you talking about? I don't hear that. Did you make that up about Father? I don't want to be an altar boy! You shut I up! Robbie, come back! Robbie! Robbie! Did you make it up, son? Did you? say how father touched him he didn't actually tell me anything no one i'm arrested i mean it have him arrested yeah are you crazy he's a priest oh yeah he's a priest he's a priest who hurt my son wait a minute wait just a minute all we know is that maybe oh all we know is that maybe he played with his pee pee that's right and what was all the bleeding about? And the doctor told you that could have been from anything. What is wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me. I just don't. Hey, Daniel, Manny, come on in. Daniel, honey, why don't you make a fresh pot of coffee? That'd go down real well. Sure. Sit down. Oh, thanks, Jim. Bit of a mess in here. Him only cleans up at the house. Switch your shift, Maddie. I thought you worked mornings. Oh, uh, I took the day off. Wish the hell I could do that. <laughs> well, hey, we um, were just... Go ahead, honey. No, no, you go, Liz. Uh, Pete, listen. Did Robbie tell you about the other altar boys? Or the father did anything to them? What? Joseph? What'd he do to him? Well, he wouldn't say. What did Robbie tell you? Well, we know that he... No, we don't. <laughs> she wants to have him arrested. Oh, him? Uh, well, we don't know for sure that he did anything yet. Why don't we talk to him? You and me, Pete. Talk to him till he talks to us. No, you just stop that. He's our priest. Let's go to the bishop. The bishop? Yes, the bishop. He's in charge of him, isn't he? The bishop. And we're going to go to the bishop. We've got to have a whole lot more to tell him than we got to tell him right now. I think we got to take this one step at a time. Now, what's the rush? The boys aren't going back there. They're safe. We know where to get him. First off, I think we got to get more information out of the boys. And then we go to the Monsignor, not the Bishop. 
I know the Monsignor. We go to the Monsignor and we ask him. I don't believe this. We are talking about Robbie. And we're talking about Joseph. Ma'am, I think that Pete's got a point. I mean, what will we say to them? Will you go to the police with me? No. Will you go to the bishop with me? Not without more to tell him. I can't stop you going by yourself. Sure. Are you a widow, Miss Kittry? No. Are you separated, Miss Kittry? No. Is your husband traveling? No. Is your husband the boy's real father, Miss Kittry? Yes. Well, where is he? He wants more information, Your Excellency! You don't need the diocese job that bad! I think we ought to talk about this later. Okay. Uh, Pete's got to go to work. I got to go to work. We all got stuff to do. Come on, honey, let's roll out. Pete. Monsignor Beauvais, I must inform you that a terrible act has been committed against my son by our parish priest, Father Obea. I believe that he has molested my son and possibly other altar boys from our church. It is only right that you remove him from St. Simon's immediately. Aubert, Frank, anything wrong? No, no, the bishop's considering Father Aubert for a diocesan award. Apparently he's worked miracles. What is it, St. Simon? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to recall his face. My mind's useless this morning. Do you know him, Paul? Oh, not really, Monsignor. It's been years since we've seen each other. Hmm. Seminary, so-so, St. -so. Anne's, 1974, transfer. Hmm. Transfer 1976, 1978, House of Affirmation. See a drinker? Not that I'm aware of, Monsignor. Transferred. Why are you taking Father away? Transferred. That'll be all, Father. Yes, Monsignor. Good morning, Monsignor. Good morning, Frank. Mmm. <sighs> That's better. Oh. Frank, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Bad news, Monsignor? The bishop has decided not to consider you for the award. Yeah, let me explain. The award would be for work you did while you were at St. Simon's. Mm -hmm. But the bishop feels it's time for you to move on. Move on? I don't understand. Move on. The bishop feels the... you're ripe for a larger parish. And he feels it'd be awkward to give you an award for work you did at the parish you're leaving. Well, I'm very happy where I am, Monsignor. I'm sure you are. Of course you are, Frank. And you'd be very happy where you're going. When would this be, Monsignor? Soon. Quite soon. After you spend some time at the House of Affirmation. Bishop feels that any priest who's being promoted should take his post renewed, refreshed. Don't you agree? 
You'll enjoy the House of Affirmation, Frank. It uh, works miracles on the spirit. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Monsignor. The House of Affirmation. You want me to go? The bishop wants you to go. Now. But I have confession Saturday. There's masses Sunday. There's a confirmation to first communion. It's in the bishop's hands, Frank. God bless you, Monsignor. Let us hope so. Are we going to church tomorrow or not? The way I'm feeling right now, I just soon burn the place down. Fine. Then that's that. Now hold on. I could change my mind tomorrow. When? An hour before church? No, we can't put it off anymore. Now, how come all of a sudden I gotta make up both our minds? How come you got nothing to say to me? What do you want me to say? It's not the same for me. You know that. You know that. It's here. And it's here. It's here. I have been gone there since I was four years old. Communion, confession, confirmation. I met you there. I fell in love with you there. I married you there. They were all baptized there. I hate it. I just hate it. I hate the idea. I hate it. I hate it. I know he is right there. I know he hurt my son. I know he's bad. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Oh, God. I can't desert God over a bad priest. I mean, you do whatever you have to do. I can. Good morning. I'm Monsignor Beauvais. The bishop has asked me to tell you that Father Aubert has suddenly taken ill and will be on a brief recuperative leave. The bishop wants me to remind you that the spreading of gossip is a sin. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He's gone, for Christ's sake. Why do you want to go pester the Monsignor? I want to know if he's coming back. Come on. Monsignor. Gintry, how are you? Pierre? The Broussards? What can I do for you, Miss Gintry? Well, I wanted to ask you, Monsignor. Um, is Father Aubert coming back? Well, we'll have to see how he mends. So you say if he gets better, he's coming back? 
That's up to the bishop, Miss Gidry. Mm -hmm. Give me, Miss Gidry. I have a confirmation 20 miles from here. Miss Broussard, and your friends are... Mrs. Basile. How do you do? B Mrs. Arnaud. Hello. I thought the bishop was seeing us. The bishop is extremely busy this afternoon, Miss Gittry. I'm here in his place. Now, as I understand it, you want the bishop to assure you that Father Aubert will not be returning to St. Simon's. And you advise the bishop that it would be dangerous I use your word, to permit Father Aubert to be around young boys. Perhaps if you could explain a bit further. He did sinful things to our boys. Sinful things? Like what? What did your boys tell you? They are too scared to tell us anything. Then how do you know? Because of the way they behave. Because of the way they behave? I'm shocked. Here you all are, sensible, intelligent women, Catholic women who know that gossip and innuendo are sins, and yet you're ready, without a shred of evidence, to ruin the career of your own priest? There is evidence. Can you just send him someplace else? That's not up to me, Miss Broussard. It's up to the bishop. When can we see him, then? Frankly, Miss Gittry, given what you've told me, I don't think that bishop would agree to talk with you. Of course, I will ask. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to see you. Well, what is it? Five years. <laughs> huh? Closer to eight. The diocese sent me to talk to you. Oh, my new parish. The Monsignor thinks, and the bishop thinks, that you better forget about that. For now, mm -hmm. anyways. There's been some rumors, Frank. And there's been a complaint like before. So is that why they sent you? Frank, would you like me to hear your confession? <laughs> My confession? You? Tell them to send a priest. I am not a misfit or a criminal. I am a priest. I don't want to talk to a priest. You tell them that. Fine. You tell them they sent the wrong man. The diocese will be in touch. We're not the same. Yes, we are, Frank.
What's the matter? <sighs> Robbie, I'm sorry, honey. It's all right. It's all right. And I'm saying one thing has nothing to do with the other. It's not the first time he got a few Ds. What? Two old Ds, two Fs. What's the bishop supposed to do? Coach him in math? The bishop's got nothing to do with it. Father has got something to do with Father it. Father is gone, for God's well, sake. Well, why don't they tell us that? You just went over there, Ann. I went over there months ago. Well, that proves it. He's gone. Looking for me. Get you. The bishop Coming is on the bed. We need your help. Miss Gitcher, please calm down. As I've explained, we don't mean him any harm. He's our bishop. We're asking him for help. Given what he knows, Mr. Gitcher, the bishop doesn't see any way he can help you. Well, then who the hell can? God damn it! Tell me, God damn it! May God forgive you. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, and it has been five days since my last confession. Please tell me your sins. But my last confession, and the one before that, and a lot before that, I didn't confess to all my sins. I didn't confess to my hate. Please go on. I hate the priest. But even more, I hate the monsignor. I hate the bishop. How can God forgive them for what they've done to us? They've ruined our lives. They've betrayed us. Do you believe the church betrayed you? Yes. Do you want to leave the church? No. But I think it has left me, Father. Can afford this lawyer. Pete, here. Friends, I want to do right by you, but the trouble is, it's your boy's word against the church. A case like this, it would really tilt things your way. You weren't alone. Now, do you happen to know any of the other parents? Of course. Oh, good, good. Now, what were you looking for? Well, first off, to make sure he don't come back. Mm -hmm. And then maybe even get him out of the church. Yes, yes, and some kind of help for Robbie, doctor. Good. 
Uh, well, after I've done some homework, we'll talk about damages. Damages? Money. For your suffering. And more especially for your boy's suffering. Is this going to be real expensive? I lose. All I charge is out-of-pocket money. I win, I'll take a little bitty taste of what I get for you. Now, you folks go on home and uh, take it easy. Leave everything to me. Dave Davis is on your side. And remember, David did beat Goliath. Thank you. As you know, the diocese is only one of the defendants in this case. The insurers whom we represent are the others. And the insurers believe there is simply no choice. Settle. And settle now. In other words, the insurers credit these fantastic accusations? With nine families, with nine sons bringing this action? Yes. The bishop is not completely convinced that these families, devout Catholic families, one and all, will pursue this to the point of confronting their own church. So you're not willing to settle now? We feel at this point such a step would be... Ridiculous. Premature. Monsignor, under the diocese contract with my company, in the event that you reject our advice in an action against you, we are not responsible for defending you. Monsignor, I am more than willing to accept that responsibility. Or for any damages. In addition, should you choose to defend this case, my company and my colleagues' companies would be forced to cancel the diocese insurance against certain types of liability. Well, gentlemen, what do you suggest? If you could just give us a moment, please. Okay. Shall we all agree then, without acknowledging liability, that the boys can begin therapy immediately and that we should reimburse for that therapy? Up to a negotiated cutoff date. Up to a negotiated cutoff date. But these reimbursements will be made only in the event of a settlement. Now, let's talk about what we want. First, to hold harmless all the defendants. Second, not to mention any specific acts by any of the defendants in the settlement. Third, complete secrecy concerning every element of the settlement. Fourth, a pledge not to bring any future action against any of the defendants. Fifth, since all the defendants are held harmless, the question of removing the priest from the church or disciplining him or reassigning him cannot be part of any settlement. It would be proper to assure them that the children are out of harm's way if you indicate by word or deed that you have taken any action or intend to take any action regarding this priest, you will have acknowledged your liability. These people are suffering. Their settlement will pay for their suffering. The church should offer them solace. If you offer them solace, you are rejecting our advice and acknowledging your liability. <clears throat> it's like this, Your Excellency. Offer them solace or keep your diocese.
We are not lying. We are not dissembling. We are buying their silence. We are doing exactly what we do in the confessional. We are keeping our sins between ourselves and God. <laughs> our sins against innocent children. Your Excellency, nobody weeps more for these children than I do, but they will heal. Their families will heal. With God's help, even this priest will heal. But if we admit this, if we acknowledge this, if we parade his sins before the world, this diocese will not heal. It will wither and die. And if this diocese dies, a piece of the church dies, a piece of Holy Mother Church, a piece of God. And no child, no family, no priest is worth that. We're still buying their silence. It's the only way we can obtain it. Your Excellency, I need your permission to instruct the lawyers to pursue an immediate and secret settlement. Robbie. Hold up your left hand, Robbie. Take the veil off the chalice, and then I do the little pictures. I mean, crucets. Cruets, cruets. There you go, Father. You're all dressed now. Now, when you're done reading, you all sign right down there at the bottom. And tomorrow morning, your boys will get $40,000. And once a year for the next four years, they'll get themselves another $40,000. $200,000, my friends, U.S. Wait, no way. There's nothing in here about father. No, there's nothing in here about what he did. There's nothing in here about what they're going to do. Him. There's nothing to be worried about. The bishop himself told me. No, we want it in here. The church figures that this is church business, period. What about the other families? Well, I can't breach any confidences, Daniel, but let me just say that I have seven sets of signatures on that thing, and I am now waiting for the eighth and ninth. No, this is what it's all about, it getting rid of him. It seems to me that if this is so important to you, maybe you just better say no, withdraw your action. What the hell, it's only $200,000. Oh, now, now, I'm sorry. I'll take it easy, huh? Why don't you folks uh, go on home and, and talk it over? Hmm? Now, uh, keep this in mind. Your boy's getting treatment. You'll be paid back as soon as you sign. Father ain't around, your friends are going along, and $200,000 buys a lot of peace of mind. All right, I'll see you all later. Oh, and another thing, uh, nothing to worry about, but the church is, is kind of set on paying everybody at the same time. Sort of one for all, all for one kind of situation. You take care now. That lawyer didn't get us what we wanted. He said that the bishop told Why him. Why won't the bishop tell us? I am, you know. I, kn I know, he's too busy. The Monsignor is too busy. Every damn priest in my church is too busy to give us a little comfort for what one of their own did to our son. And too busy to tell us whether they're going to stop him from doing it again. They don't care about us. They just want it over with. Piece of cake. Do we have candles? We did that. We're gonna do it 
again. I'm sorry to bring it up here, Pete. But we want to take it. And we're near broke, and we need that money, I swear it. It's the waiting and trying to hang tough. It's hurting the boy. All the boys. We talk about it later. Tomorrow, maybe. I ain't stalling you. understand your frustration, but that's what children do. They don't talk, they act. It's way too soon to expect him to talk about anything to you. He's talking to you, isn't he? Well, actually, no. In a case like this, with a child, you don't want to force him to relive everything. So you use another technique to find out what exactly happened. Separate the imaginary and the embellished from the truth. But you've got to do it at his speed so he doesn't feel threatened. It's not like confession. But how come he's not getting better? Maybe you better try a little harder to convince him that father's not coming back. Well, they won't say that he isn't. Why don't they put him in prison? Yeah, we've been through but that. But that's where he belongs, a son of a bitch. We commend our sister Caroline to you, O oh Lord. Beloved teacher, servant of your church, devoted friend to all who knew her. May she live on in your presence. In your mercy and love, forgive whatever sin she may have committed through human weakness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Show compassion people in their sorrow, be our refuge and our strength. Father. To lift us from the darkness of this grief and the peace and light of your presence. Listen to our prayers. Look with love on your people. You stay right there, Father. You come near, I'm bound to hurt you. God bless you. DA's office is supposed to be here. Third floor. Sit down, Mr. Gittry. I can't. Well, then stand still. You're making me dizzy. I've been a prosecutor for nine years. And in those nine years, I've taken but one child molesting case to court, and I lost that one. And the defendant wasn't a priest. But there's nine boys. I don't see anybody here but you. Which means there's just one boy, yours. Now tell me something, Mr. Gidry. When you first heard it, did you believe it? Yeah, well, neither will a jury.
Take this. Get on with your lives. Molly, Ken Lauren, is Claude there? Hiya, Claude. No, I'm not prosecuting one of your clients, thank God. I want to send you some people, name a Gittry. They got themselves a problem. I thought maybe you could help them out. I'll tell them. His name is Claude Fortier, and he's one... Well, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. I push this, like this. And then I push this. Now, Molly, how many times I gotta tell you? Don't make the clients do your work. <laughs> you must be Robbie. I'm Claude Fortier. What's a client? Well, you're a client. Client is what we lawyers call our customers. Where a doctor call his customers patients. <laughs> yeah, it makes it sound real unselfish. Like a public servant or something. <laughs> Mr. Gitchin? Hello. Mrs. Gitchin? Hello. Yeah. Well, come on, client, let's go. <laughs> uh, you too. Come on. Yeah, sit over there, Robbie. Yeah, up there. Come on, sit down. So, just what is it you want me to do? Help us put him in prison. That's what you want? Can you do it? Oh, yes, I can do it, Mrs. Gittry. How? Well, you fire Dave Davis and you hire me. I sue, but I don't settle no matter what they offer. I go to trial, I win. I take the transcript of the trial of the DA. He goes to trial, he wins. Father Aubert goes to prison. That's how. All right, yeah. do it. Yeah. What about you, Robbie? You want father to go to prison? You know how you send a man to prison? Dad says I have to tell a lot of people what he did to me. That's right. Now, can you do that? You sure? You tell your dad yet? Your mom? What about this doctor you've been seeing? But you want to tell a whole lot of other people. Strangers, is that right? <laughs> so, still want to fire Dave Davis and hire me? Can we have a minute? Take the settlement. We don't want that damn hush money. Now listen, hush money's better than no money at all. No, it ain't. We can't. It's like saying to them, okay, go right ahead, do whatever you want to my son. Cripple him, destroy him, whatever you want. I won't say a word. I won't press charges. I won't lie well, awake at night listening to them locking the doors and the windows. I'll just take your money and forget all about it. Just pay me and my son will be innocent all over again. We can't. We just can't. Okay. Molly, draft a letter to Dave Davis. You know the form. And fix your face. We're about to sue God. <laughs> Cut that! 
and Father was thinking uh, today would be a good day to talk to you, me being your friend and him being your priest and all. Actually, me and Father and the rest of the families, you know what I'm saying? I could use one of them. I don't get in anybody's business, but me and Father and the rest of the families, well, we heard you went and you hired this commie atheist and you put yourself in his hands. And I gotta say to you, Pete, and the rest of the families will back me up. And Father will back me up, right, Father? Right. It's cutting all our throats. Yours too, Pete. You're making us all bleed. Is that right, Father? I'm talking to you, Pete. Are you talking to me, Father? Are you just here to hold his hand? You're out of line, Pete. Father, I'm waiting for you to back him up. The church is deeply concerned. What about you, Daniel? Are you deeply concerned? <laughs> yeah, I guess you must be. You and all the other families. $200,000 is a lot of money. You got no right to keep our boys from getting that money. I ain't keeping your boys from getting it, Daniel. I just ain't taking it for mine. You live here! You ignorant mule-ass son of a bitch! Here! With me and Maddie and Grace and Bob and Lucille and Arthur and all the rest of us! And with Father and with the Monsignor and with the Bishop. What the hell's wrong with you? You keep doing what you're doing, you might as well move to goddamn Russia. <laughs> you ain't deeply concerned, Daniel. You're scared. You're so scared you're pissing down your leg. I can smell it from here. You being my friend and all, tell me something. How come you and all the other people that live here, just like I live here, how come you aren't backing me up? Oh, afternoon, Dave. I got a good mind to file a formal complaint with the Bar Association. They don't like lawyers who steal other lawyers' clients in mid-case. I don't know what the hell you promised them, Claude, but you lied. I got them a fair deal. Oh, I know you did. I did wonder why they came to me. Because they're greedy. Oh, that must be it. I'll see you around, Dave. It won't work. The diocese made a deal, and they're sticking with it. Is that a fact? Well, I'll see you around, Dave. Hello there. Huh? That's not him. The address. It's the diocese. Oh. Five yeah. years ago. Charges yeah. dropped by complainant. Yeah. Who is? Jane and John, John Doe on behalf of their yeah. minor son, John Doe Jr. Yeah. The charges were against? A young priest named Father, Father Delambre. De <laughs> well, well, well. I don't want you to steal anything, Father. But I'm sure the Monsignor has a copying machine, right? I want to help. I know the harm he can do. I want to help. Tell me what else I can do. Just tell me. There's nothing else. I can't do it. Oh, you're wrong, Father. You can find Father Aubert's diocese file. But if you can, I'll find John and Jane Doe, their son John Jr. Who is still a minor. 
and I'll make you the defendant. He can't help himself. Neither can I, Father. <laughs> Portier. Mr. Portier, pleasure. May I introduce Mr. Bouchard, who represents the diocese? Uh, sir. And Mr. Hummel, who represents the lead insurer. Hello. Oh, my executive assistant, Miss Landry. Over here, honey. Now, we're having tea, but if you'd prefer coffee or something stronger, I'd be happy to oblige. Uh, coffee, please, for two. Blacks. I, uh, I thought this was supposed to be informal. Oh, it is. Otherwise, I'd be taping. <laughs> In your call to the Monsignor, Counselor, you indicated that your clients were prepared to file their own action against the church and were seeking drastically more satisfaction than that negotiated by Mr. Davis. Is that correct? That's correct. You also indicated to the Monsignor that your clients were taking this step because you had come by certain new and, in your words, appallingly damaging information. Obviously. <clears throat> you see, the one thing... Excuse me, your coffee. Father O'Bear has been molesting boys for ten years now. You people not only knew it and did nothing about it, you kept putting him where he could molest more boys. <laughs> that defies credibility. Yes, it does. But it's true. I swear to God. Isn't that right, Monsignor? I instruct you not to answer that question. Ah. Uh. If we assume this information is true, which we do not, what do you propose? Give my client $750,000. Make sure Aubert goes to prison. <laughs> you mean have him arrested? I'll get him to turn himself in. Plead guilty to whatever he's charged with. Uh, if you'd excuse us for a moment, Monsignor. If you do, there'll be no trial and no publicity. If you don't, we'll sue you. Then the DA will indict him. You'll have two trials. Nothing but publicity. Uh, we'd like to think about this. Well, I wouldn't. Good. Come on, Molly. You don't need us. We'll be in touch, Mr. Fortier. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Monsignor, forgive my hands. I envy you. I always prayed for green thumb. An unanswered prayer. The bishop would like you to perform a small service for the church. Of course, Monsignor. The bishop would like you to surrender to Kenneth Lauren. He's in the district attorney's office. 
and plead guilty to any charge Mr. Loring decides to bring. The uh, charge, as I'm sure you've guessed, is the sexual abuse of a minor. I don't abuse minors. Who, who are the boys, my boys? Father. I love my boys. They are not your boys. Oh, yes, they are. Children belong to people who love them the most, and nobody can love them the way I do. And if you think what I do with... Monsignor, I give them all my love. All of God's love. Can their parents do that? Hmm, can they? No. They neglect them. They beat them. But if Monsignor wants me to surrender to the uh, district attorney and plead guilty for letting God's love flow through me, then I'll do that right now. I'll do that this minute. The bishop wants you to surrender to Mr. Loring, Father. The bishop. The bishop would like to avoid a trial, as I'm sure you would. A trial, Monsignor? Are you going to have me arrested? The families are. God bless you, Monsignor. Sit over there, please. Now, this is a courtroom. And this is a witness stand. Now, Robbie, you're the chief witness. You're the most important person here. Now, I want you to get yourself ready. All right, make a fist. Come on, make a fist. Open it. Again. Again. That's it. You get all that blood working in there. Now, take some deep breaths. That's it. Come on. In, out. In and sit up straight. You've got a hundred people out there watching you. Yeah, and don't fidget. Jury will think you're lying. Over here's the judge. Now, right here, the big table. There's six lawyers sitting there. First one's getting up now, and he's coming over here. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Robbie, your lawyer just helped you tell us what Father Albert did to you. Now, I'm going to help you tell us, okay? What did Father Robert do to you? Of course, wait, Robbie. He played with me. How? With my... We didn't hear you. With my peepee. More than once? Sure. How did he play with your peepee? -pee? He touched it. Face the jury. You can't tell us or show us how? Now, what else did he do? He made me play with his peepee. -pee. More than once? All the, a lot. How? Now, let the record indicate that the witness made a gesture whose meaning is not clear to the court. Proceed, counselor. What else did he do? He... He, he put... He put his peepee -pee down there. Down where? Where you do number two. More than once? Yes. What else did he do? He made me kiss it. Kiss what? His peepee. -pee. More than once? Yes. What else? He took pictures. 
May I remind the court that no pictures have been introduced in evidence, nor has anyone besides this witness testified to the existence of any pictures. Robbie, do you know the difference between lying and telling the truth? Yes. What is lying? It's when you make something up. Did you ever make anything up? Don't look here. Did you ever make anything up? Jury can't hear you. Yes. What did you make up? I made up that I killed a bear or an alligator, sometimes a wolf. What else? Face front. Don't look here. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, you can look at me now, Robbie. Did you ever make up anything at school? Sometimes, I guess, about grades. Yeah. What about your sister? Did you ever make up anything about her? Only when she's mean to me. Uh, did you ever make up anything to tell father at confession? Only if I didn't do anything real bad. Yeah. Now, Robbie, do you know what your pee-pee looks like? Good. Now I want you to tell us what Father Obear's pee, pee looks like. What? Tell us. You played with it, you kissed it, you had it down there, so you say. So tell us what Father's pee, pee looks like. Tell us. God damn it, 40! Tell us! You can't tell you because you don't know, do you? You made it all up. Like the wolf or the alligator in your grave and your confession. Didn't you make it all up? It's true! It's true! Oh, it is? Oh, then why can't you tell us what his pee-pee looks like? Come on, tell the truth, Robbie. You made it all up, didn't you? Come on! You can't do that in court. And there are five more lawyers just waiting their chance at him. He's 
swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God.